Hello, gentlemen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited. We're going to talk about four ways to keep your relationship going strong. And for those of you guys who are watching this, sorry, my hair's a bit of a mess. For those of you who are watching this and you're like, Erica, I'm single. How is this going to help me? Well, damn it. You're going to be prepared. You're going to start doing this stuff now, now, so that when you meet your woman, you're ready to go. Okay, so even if you're not in a relationship, you really want to watch this because doing these things now, incorporating them into your life with the people that are in your life, it's really going to support you. And obviously, if you're in a relationship, then this is really going to make your relationship strong. It's going to strengthen it so that you guys can have the fulfilling love that we all desire. So with that being said, I do have a bit of an announcement, kind of a sad announcement, but exciting. Are you ready for this? So uh, this will be my last live Q&A in my lingerie for possibly the next three to four months. Let's all just take a moment of silence for that. <laughs> Yes. So the reason why I was, I was, I was just kind of holding and waiting that waiting on that. Cause I was hoping like a flood of chats would have just gone off and been like, no, Erica, no, but not one of you guys have said a damn thing. <laughs> finally. Thank you, Christian. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, Christian. It's like, <gasps> okay. I got one response. Awesome. Wasn't the dramatic response I was looking for. I wanted the whole like drama, like, please don't. No. Okay. So I'll tell you why. Um, actually I can't fully tell you why I am working on a very, um, <clears throat> I'm working on a project that I can't disclose yet. Um, when I can disclose it, thank you, Kirk. Kirk's like a moment of silence. Thank you. When I can share with you guys why I will not be doing live Q and A's because of this special project that I'm working on. You guys will be the first to hear about it. Well, first, my emotional warriors will hear about it first. If you're in my private Facebook group, they're going to hear about it first. But then my YouTube community will hear about it second. So um, I will announce it in the community section when I am legally allowed <laughs> to, to announce this. I'm laughing at Marco Gabelli because he says he likes to make fun of me. Marco's my dear, dear friend, and he likes to make fun of me. He always says that he has this Russian guy coming after me. He's like, Dimitri, clear shot, take her out. <laughs> so it's quite funny. Uh, so, yeah, so for three months, I know anyone who's watching this, they're like, get to the damn advice. I came here for advice. Why is this chick rambling on? Well, I'm just for my loving community that I care about very much. I just want to share with you guys, yeah, that we'll, we're going to put a pause on live Q&A in my lingerie, and I really hope to bring it back. Um, so, but yeah, I'm working on a very special secretive project, and when I'm legally allowed to share it with you, I will tell you guys what's going on. So with that being said, without further ado, four ways to make your relationship strong. First and foremost, passion. Passion, 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 passion. I think a lot of couples get caught in the mundaneness of life, of paying bills, of having schedules and, and a regimented life of like, this is what we do and this is the structure of our life. And, and when we control our lives, when we pay attention to this, especially if you're in a relationship, even as a single when we micromanage our lives, this is strong. I want you to pay attention. We leave very little room for passion. Because listen, passion needs space to breathe. It needs opportunity. It needs curiosity. It needs wonder. It needs spontaneity. But when we live a regimented life, we leave, we leave very little room for passion to have its place. What do I mean by that? 
passion looks like walking up to your wife, your girlfriend in the middle of the kitchen and, and putting her on the counter and kissing all over her neck when she leases. And she's like, what are you doing? I got to make dinner. And you're like, no, we've got to do this right now because this matters more than anything. And then you could always say something very dramatic, like what if the world ends tonight? Wouldn't you love that we lived with this last moment? <laughs> she's like, you're crazy. But then she kind of believes it because of what our world's going through. So she's like, that's actually not too far off, actually. Um, it's passion. That is one of the strongest things that really strengthen a relationship. And many couples lose sight of that because their lives are too rigid and they don't allow for the spontaneity of passion. And passion is something that you create. It's not a freaking Hollywood movie. It's not something that you just you're born with or you pull out of your ass. No, it is something that is intentional. When we want passion in our lives, it's something that we have to be intentional about. And so you as a single man, let's say some of you guys who are single watching this, you living out a passionate life by creating that room of less rigidity and more spontaneity, spontaneity, taking risk, doing things outside of your comfort zones. That will equip you. If you live in a if you live a passion lifestyle now, when you get into a relationship, guess what? It's going to be second nature. It's not going to be as hard as some of my guys who are watching this who are in a relationship and who have a very mundane, rigid life. For them, it's much more complicated. But this is a muscle we all must work. If we want to live a whole heart-filled, a heart-lived life, I like that. I'm going to write that down. Where's my pencil? It's gone. It's over there. When we want to live a heart-lived life, passion has to be a part of it. There has to be room for spontaneity. We cannot be burdened with the mundaneness of life. We have to be intentional about creating room for passion to have its place in our lives. That's in your intimate relationships. That's with your own day-to-day -day life. It's creating that space. And so surprising her when she's in the middle of cooking something and you just pick her up and you just start kissing on her, kissing on her neck. When it's Friday night and you guys normally stay in and you watch Netflix, you go, honey, get dressed. I bought you a dress. There's a dress hanging in your closet. You did what? Yeah, there's a dress hanging in your closet. I've got reservations at that restaurant everyone's been talking about. We're going tonight. Get ready. What? That spontaneity. And guess what? You take her to that restaurant and she's excited because she looks sexy in her dress. You tell her how sexy she looks. Guess what? When you guys get home, she's going to make love to you like she hasn't made love to you in a long time. Why? Because you created room for passion. So powerful. I could go on and on about this. So second one. First one is passion. Second one to make a strong relationship is communication. Communication. A lot of guys quit telling their wives why they love her. Well, she knows that I love her. Bullshit. Bullshit. She needs you to tell her, to cherish her, to nurture her. Men forget to nurture the woman, the woman that they have. She is a flower. You need to water her. You need to put her in sunshine. And you do that by telling her all the things that you love about her, that you admire about her, the ways that you still find her sexy. Because I promise you, if you will verbalize these things to her, she'll go, really? You think that? Really? Yes, I do think that. And you will open her up in ways that will make her want to respect you. That will make her want to go, wow, I need to start paying attention to my man. Because why? You're feeding her. When a man doesn't feed his wife with communication, she just withers up and dries. That's why she starts getting pissed off about the trash and stupid shit that doesn't matter. Because she's void of love. She's in a desert. Your relationship has become a desert. And she's withering away, crying out for some water and food. And the way that you feed her, the way that you... Give quench her thirst is through your communication.
It's flirting with her again. It's consistently showing up and telling her why you love this woman, why you choose her every day of your life. You go out of the way to tell the security guy at the door when you walk into your work, hello, good morning, how are you? Go out of your way to tell your woman why you love her. We can do it for strangers. Be consistent to say hello and be polite. Then you better be consistent with the woman that's loving on you. Or maybe not because she's so empty. And if you're one of those guys, you're like, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Then hello. There's my compliments Bible right there. Get the compliments Bible. It's what, 40 bucks to save your relationship? Quit being a lazy ass. Get it and put it to work. But it's that communication of telling your wife all of the reasons why you desire. And she's going to be shocked. And, and this line that, that most people think of, they should know, or I assume they know. You know what they say about assuming? Makes an ass out of you and it makes an ass out of me. That's what assuming means. Don't assume shit. Assume she knows nothing and it's your job to tell her. And guess what? The more that you value her, the more she's going to value you. She's going to start respecting you, which is going to feed you. It's going to feed that inner man inside of you that when you show up at work, you show up at the workplace, you show up in your business, you're going to feel so confident. Your shoulders are going to be back. You're going to be so strengthened because your woman is feeding you with respect. But most of the time, women can't give that to men because they're just withered on the inside because they haven't been loved on. They haven't been communicated with. Now, this is now like emotional warrior ninja level stuff. The next one I'm going to cover, which is, are you ready? Vulnerability. Vulnerability. Yikes, that's where that's where a lot of us fall off, right? Vulnerability isn't convenient, but if you're not doing vulnerability in your relationship, you're not doing a relationship. You're just roommates. Like let's get clear. Let's let's get on the same page about that. If you're not doing vulnerability in your relationship, you guys are housemates. And what? Most men don't want to do that because they don't want to rock the boat. They just want to keep the peace. Okay, well, those are dead people goals. Dead people, you know, I saw that in a TED talk and I thought it was so brilliant because I hear a lot of men say that. I just want peace. I just want things to be easy. I don't want any drama. Yeah. Okay. So this is the real world. Here we are. Welcome. <laughs> the way that you're going to get access to her heart, the way that she's going to get access to, her, to your heart, the way that you guys are really going to be able to see each other from the heart, to be able to champion each other in this life, to be able to lift each other up in this life is through vulnerability, having those conversations of going, help me get to know the real you. <clears throat> and those of you who are single, guess what? You get to practice this today with your friendships, with your family. Because if you don't do it now as a single person, you sure as hell. I think a lot of a lot of singles get caught up with when I get in a relationship, I'm going to be this superhero. No, you're not. No, you're not. What you do today is what you're going to do in that relationship. So vulnerability with your friends, with the people that you love, showing them the real you, having the courage to vocalize what's going on, what, you, what you're happy about, what you're not happy about, what your boundaries are, is powerful. And I, I normally just try to share one thing with you guys, but I'm sharing two. And that is my vulnerability program. If you struggle with vulnerability, you got to get your hands on that. You got to quit, quit dicking around and start doing that. Start doing the work because you liberate yourself in return. Bill Howard says, no drama, no love. No, that's not what I'm saying. I, I'm sorry if, it com if I conveyed it that way. I'm just saying what we, what we in interpret as drama is just working through communication. People go, oh, it's drama. And I go, you have a low tolerance for uh, workability is really what it boils down to. I don't think that love is drama, just the opposite. But I do think that that love is having some very uncomfortable conversations. 
So we have passion, we have communication, we have vulnerability. And the last one is the most powerful one. Before I get to that one, I just want to meet you guys in the chat section. Ninja Wolf uh, says, is being friends with the girl first more important than wasting my time looking for a popular girl who's out of my league and has no love interest? Ninja Wolf, I think you know the answer to that. Of course, it's becoming friends. Um, um, hi, Dave Thompson. Aaron Salatine says, I literally flew from California to the Ukraine. I had an emotional connection with my tour guide. Even got intimate with her. I didn't expect this. The universe threw me a curveball. Um, he says, a part, I'm shocked. A part of me does not know what to do or how to keep a long-distance connection with a woman. One, good for you for taking a chance. I love when people just get a curveball and they just jump on the opportunity. This is living, in my opinion. This is living. It's like, I feel like most people don't have an exciting life and a life that they're, they're excited to live that, that heart lived life because the universe gives them tons of chances and they go, Nope, Nope. That's, 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 yeah, I'm going to have to get out of my comfort zone for that. And I'm not going to do that. Well, then you're not going to live is really what it boils down to. So I honor you for doing that in terms of the long distance connection, honey, I've got tons of videos on here about long distance relationships. So just type in Erica Angelo long distance relationship. I got you, boo. Christian Skull says, Erica, hello from beautiful West Palm Beach. Your insight has touched my mind and heart. <sighs> and on that note, I could just wrap up this live Q&A and be like, eh, I'm done. I love that. That's so beautiful. I need to get out to Florida, by the way. I'm here in America. And I really need to get out to Florida. I've got some good friends out there. And it's getting damn cold in LA. I'm like, what the hell? Get me back to Bali. Too damn cold here. Alan, hello, darling. Sean, hi, my dear. Sean's one of my emotional warriors. Giovanni, ciao, Erica. Hello from Italia. Nice to meet you, Giovanni. Hi, Scott Mace. Um, Kirk. Oh, yeah. Uh, Daniel, Ninja Wolf, Marco. Um was up here it says hello erica it's always good to hear you and a real treat to watch you in lingerie thank you um oh penguin thank you so much it actually sounds funny saying that and then falling through but we enjoy the wisdom you share with us that means so much to me i really love this i have to say it's going to be hard for me to not do this um i was just talking to marco on the phone before i got on this live q a and i I was saying it's going to be really hard because working on this project, I won't be able to do these live Q and A's. And I said, that's going to be kind of hard because I thrive on connection. You know, I, I love coaching my clients. Um, I love, you know, being able to do these live Q and A's, connecting with you guys, hearing your heart and to not have that. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. Um, but hopefully we will resume. Hopefully we will resume. Uh, Rick Storm says, if I find, whoops, okay, you guys just saw that I'm cheating. <laughs> I've got my yoga pants on and I'm like, whoops, I, I have a, such a habit of putting my knee up on my chair and now you just saw that I'm cheating and I have yoga pants on. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I actually am going to go work out after this. So busted. It's like it removes the illusion. Rick Storm says, if I find a lady I like on dating on a dating site, what should I say? My first message to get her to respond back. I can't get anyone to respond back. Rick, I have the compliments Bible, my man. Why have you done that yet? I have a whole guys, I got all this stuff to help you. You just gotta use it. Yeah, get the compliments Bible, my man, because I have a whole section on like what to text message women or what to message them on dating apps. Uh Penguin says, good luck with your new challenge. I appreciate that. Uh, hey, Jimmy, the mic. Aaron says, passion. Uh, yes, Ninja Wolf, we got to make room for passion. <laughs> I like that. Kirk says, to boil the pot, you got to turn the heat on. Desiderio Guadalupe, good subject. I'm glad. Uh, Alexis, hi, darling. Hi, Antoine. Chris, hi, dear. Uh, wow. Penguin, that's powerful. He says, wow, I got to admit you have changed my perspective in relationships. I will miss you. 
well, I'm still going to be here. I'm going to still have videos coming out, so I'm not going anywhere. And hopefully, like I said, we'll get to resume with these. Um, I like that. Cool Hot says, women are like plants. They need water and food and communication. Um, let's see. Chris says, good to know, Erica. I've been in a relationship for a month now. Chris, tell me everything. That's so exciting. Tell me in the, um, Chris is one of my emotional warriors. Tell me in the emotional warrior group about this. Tell, we all want to know. Tell us all. Uh, is military girl playing games with me? I, I don't know, Mark. I don't know her. Uh, oh, Penguin, I'm so sorry, dear. Oh, he says, I just finished a divorce. I will implement. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you're going through that. And yeah, so this is an opportunity for you to evolve as a, as a man who is worthy of love to be able to sustain a relationship. So kudos to you for going on the journey. Uh, uh, Bill Howard, thumbs up. Uh, Kirk says, how do I flirt on Texas girls far away, but driving distance and we know each other. How do I get started? You get, you guys, if I told you once, I told you a thousand times, get the compliments Bible. That's what it's there for guys. It's in the chat section. Brandon says, sexy glasses. Bill Howard said, so right. AA. Uh, Christian says, yes, you do. Come visit me. Okay. You got a couch for me to come sleep on. I'm coming. And you have good coffee because I thrive on good coffee. Um, I'm going to miss you too, Ninja Wolf, but I'll be back. Uh, uh, Penguin, we need you, Bill Howard. Uh, <laughs> Mark C.D. Young, I can't read your comment, but that's really funny. Uh, Brandon Dam, if you have a question, Erica has probably already done a seven minute video that covers it in depth. I watch her old videos all the time. Brandon, that's so awesome. It's true. I I don't feel like there's a subject I haven't covered, but you know what? Uh, if there are, I'm, I will be covering them. I can assure you that. Bill Howard says, Erica, you'll do well in all you do. That actually means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Mr. Mega Guy says, wow, you look so sexy. And Error says, greetings from the Germany. Oh, I need to get to Germany. I've never been there. All right, so here's the last one. So we said the four things to make a strong relationship, to strengthen your relationship. And if you're single, you can be applying these now with the relationships that you are currently in. And guys, if you're new to this, make sure that you just watch this from the beginning. And also give me a thumbs up because that really tells YouTube like, hey, like she's actually providing some good stuff. Like we should promote her more. Thanks, YouTube. Very grateful for YouTube. Let's me talk to you guys. Um, so the last one is this. And this one is not a very sexy one. This is not a very sexy topic. But it's a conversation that needs to be had. Are you guys ready for this one? So we said passion, communication, vulnerability. And the last one is this. And this is not a popular subject in our time that we live in, in our swipe culture, in our Burger King culture, and our instant gratification of having our ego stroked with social media with finding immediate solutions at the disposal of our fingertips of getting online, typing in, finding YouTube advice, getting on Google. This one is a little bit more challenging and it is commitment. And this is not something that we talk about enough in our day. Commitment is that We've chosen each other and we're going to choose to make this work. And I know that gets super complicated. I've been there. It gets super complicated when you have one person that's willing to work and the other person isn't. And that's where it gets really tricky. But when you have two people that you go, this is our commitment. I commit, write this down. I commit to choose you every day. And the, here's our problem why we don't like commitment is because we don't know what the payoff is. We're uncertain about the payoff. You're committed to your job. Okay. You're committed 
to your business. You're committed, some of you, to your fitness. Why, why do we commit to, why is it easier for us to commit to these things? Because we know that there's a payoff. When you show up to job, you, your job, you get this thing called a paycheck. You don't, you don't get a paycheck. What we don't understand is what is the actual payoff in relationships? And I will tell you right here from my mouth, I may be the first person to say this, but I don't think so. Because in the book of Solomon, it says that there's nothing new under the sun. I think it's Proverbs. There's nothing new under the sun. We don't understand the payoff because we've made relationships about everything else except for what they're meant to be about. We have made relationships about buying a house together, going on vacations together, building a family together. And what we have not made relationships about is me getting to know the depths of who you are and learning to love and grow with every aspect of your being. And the only way we get to truly know that, to discover that, to stay connected and committed to that is through vulnerability, through having honest conversations with our partner. You're going, help me see you. Help me to get to know your heart. And the beauty of humans is we're always changing. We're always evolving. So it's not like you can ever know everything about your partner. But when we remain curious, we take risk of vulnerability. When we see our partner blossoming, when they feel loved and nurtured by us and they just want to make love to us. They want to cuddle us. They want to go on adventures because they feel so safe, seen and celebrated in the relationship. This is what living from the heart is all about. But we never get to tap into that in our partner, nor do they get to tap into it with us. If we don't go through the veil of vulnerability, because vulnerability is the open path. It is the gate into intimacy. And so why do relationships get mundane? Why do they become a pain in the ass? Because we're no longer committed to getting to know and loving the person that's in front of us. We're more committed to paying bills, paying for vacation, for cars, for, for college tuitions. And we're more invested in that instead of the person that we said I do to. And whenever I'm working with married couples, I always say that to them. When you guys made that vow to each other, you didn't say, I commit that you and I are going to pay our mortgage on time every month. I commit that we're going to work our asses off so that we can have two vacations a month if we're lucky. I'm mean, sorry, two vacations a year if we're lucky. I commit that we're going to develop a nice safety net of a college intuition, college tuition for our child. None of that was part of your vows. None of that was part of your commitment. Your commitment when you said, I do, in front of God, in front of everyone at your wedding, and in front of the minister was, I am committed to you as a person. But instead, we allow the distractions and the demands of life to become our sole focus. And we lose sight of our partner and we quit investing in our partner. We invest in everything else but our partner. And we wonder why our relationships fall apart. You committed to a person. You did not commit to a lifestyle. I'm going to say that again. You committed to a person. You did not commit to a lifestyle. And the only way that you get to truly know that person 
is having the courage to walk through the veil of vulnerability because it is the birthing ground of true intimacy. And if that is something that is still a scary taboo topic, I've made it super easy for you guys with my vulnerability program. It's three videos. I share my heart. I share the importance of vulnerability, why we need to do it, how do we do it. Make sure that you do it. Guys, I love you so much. You know, I had a dear friend, and I'm not even going to take credit for this. A dear friend of mine shared something with me, and it was the most brilliant thing. And he said, you know, it's it's always tricky when people go, well, what do you do for men? And I say, well, I, I'm constantly refining what that message is, constantly refining. I've been doing it for 13 years, and for 13 years, I keep refining my message. And, you know, I, I, I say, you know, now I'm saying, like, I help you guys connect with women more intimately. How do I do that? Through making you guys into emotional warriors. And a, a dear friend of mine said, Erica, you are helping men become more respectable so that the women in their life can actually respect them. And that's my heart. But more than anything, more my heart for you guys, more than a woman respecting you is for you to respect yourself. That's why I end every video with you have what it takes. And in this moment, you are loved. Because I know that when a person through my experience and through working with clients and serving people for a long ass time, that when people truly understand that they are loved, they become unstoppable. You knowing that you're loved is a birthing ground for you to become that emotional warrior. First, you need to know that you're loved. And that's why in every video, I try to assure you guys that you, my darlings, are indeed loved for who you are, but Damn it, it's time for you to see that for yourself and quit asking the world, am I lovable? And you getting in that God mirror and saying, I choose to love you. I choose to respect the man that I see in this mirror. I choose that for myself. So that you don't live in the uncertainty of having that question answered by the rest of the world. That you get to answer that for yourself. And as you answer that for yourself, when a woman comes into your life, she respects you because you've already done it for your damn self. That's the heart of my message. That's why I love you guys. That's why I love, not why I love you guys, why I love serving you guys. I love you guys because you're people. We have hearts and we're brothers and we're sisters and we're all connected and we're all united by source of love. And that's our birthright to be loved. I'm just here to restore you to your birthright of being loved. So guys, let's see when we get to resume with these live Q and A's. Um, I'm, I'm going to miss you guys. Hopefully, I will be able to get back to them next year. But for the next three months, we're going to have to put them on hold, which makes me so, so sad. But it is a very big project that I'm working on. And once I'm able to share with you guys what that is, my emotional warrior guys will be the first to know. Uh, and then you guys will be second. And I'll be sure to share it in my community, community page uh, when I'm allowed to. So guys, you're so loved. You're struggling with what to say to women. Get the compliments Bible, you guys. If you're ready to deepen your walk with people, with your walk with yourself, start with vulnerability. I love you guys so much. I Damn, I love you guys. I love you so much. And you guys really do have what it takes. But you got to overcome your blind spots. It's really what it boils down to. It's why I create these online programs. I wish I could coach all of you. I wish I could. But since I can't, and that's not realistic, that's why I create these online programs. 
because most of you guys are in the situations that you're in. You're not getting the results that you want because you've got some blind spots. So I create these programs so that you can overcome your blind spots. You can spot them and go, shit, I haven't been doing that. Shit, that's costing me a lot. Shit, this is why I keep failing. Oh, this is what I do. Awesome. Okay, great. That's my heart. I'm going to continue to create more programs for you guys so that you're covered. You won't have any blind spots. It's like, okay, this is where I struggle. Okay, Erica's got a program for that. I can overcome because you are overcomers. So I love you so much. Thank you for being here. It really honors me that you guys choose to share your time with me. Thank you so much. So guys, I will be seeing you soon, but know that you're loved and know that I am championing you guys through my heart every day. Be loved and I will see you guys soon. You guys take care. Bye-bye.